John Chrysostom was one of the most articulate and influential preachers of the early Christian Church. A native of Antioch, Chrysostom was elected Patriarch of Constantinople in AD 398, although he was named to the post against his wishes. His eloquent and uncompromising preaching was so extraordinary that 150 years after his death, he was given the surname Chrysostom, meaning the golden mouth or the golden tongue. John of Antioch was born around AD 347 in Antioch, the city where believers in Jesus Christ first were called Christians. His father Secundus was a distinguished military officer in the Imperial Army of Syria. He died when John was an infant. John's mother, Antusha, was a devout Christian woman and only 20 years old when she became a widow. In Antioch, the capital of Syria and one of the foremost educational centers of the day, Chrysostom studied rhetoric, literature and law under the pagan teacher Libanius. For a brief period after completing his studies, Chrysostom practiced law, but he soon began to feel called to serve God. He was baptized into the Christian faith at 23 and underwent a radical renunciation of the world and dedication to Christ. Initially, Chrysostom pursued monastic life. During his life as a monk, he spent two years living in a cave, standing continually sleeping and memorizing the entire Bible. As a result of his self-extreme mortification, self was severely undermined and he had to abandon the life of ascetism. After returning from the monastery, Chrysostom became active in the Church of Antioch, serving under Meletius, the Bishop of Antioch, and Diodorus, the leader of a school in the city. In AD 381, Chrysostom was ordained to deacon by Meletius, and then five years later, he was ordained a priest by Flavian. Immediately, his eloquent preaching and earnest character gained him the administration and respect of the whole church in Antioch. Chrysostom's clear, practical and powerful sermons attracted huge crowds and made a significant impact on the religious and political communities in Antioch. His enthusiasm and clarity of communication appealed to ordinary people who often pushed their ways to the front of the church to hear him better. But his confrontational teachings frequently got him into trouble with the elastical and political leaders of this day. A recurring theme of Chrysostom's sermons was the Christian essential to care for the needy. It is foolish and a public madness to fill the cupboards with clothing. He pressed in one sermon and allow men who are created in God's image and likeness to stand naked and trembling with the cold so that they can hardly hold themselves up. On February 26, 398, Against his own objections, Chrysostom became Archbishop of Constantinople by the command of Eutophius, a government official. He was taken by military force to Constantinople and consecrated as Archbishop. Eutophius believed the church of the capital city deserved to have the finest of all the orators. Chrysostom had not sought the patriarchal position, but he accepted it as God's divine will. Chrysostom, now minister of one of the largest churches in Christendom, became increasingly famous as a preacher while simultaneously controversial for his disapproving criticism of the wealthy and their ongoing exploitation of the poor. His words stung the ears of the rich and the powerful as he denounced their wicked abuses of authority. Piercing even more than his words was his lifestyle. When he continued to live in authority, using his substantial household allowance to minister to the poor and build a hospital. Soon Chrysostom fell out of favor with the court of Constantinople, particularly the Empress Eudocia, who was personally offended by his moral reprimands. She wanted Chrysostom silenced and decided to have him banished. Only six years after his appointment to Archbishop, on June 20, 404, John Chrysostom was escorted away from Constantinople, never to return. The remainder of his days were lived in exile. John Chrysostom's most significant contribution to Christian history was to hand down more words than any other Greek-speaking early church father. He did this through his numerous biblical commentaries, homely letters and sermons. More than 800 of them are still available today. Chrysostom was by far the most articulate and influential Christian preacher of his era. With an extraordinary gift of explanation and personal application, his works include some of the finest expositions on the books of the Bible, especially Genesis, Psalms, Isaiah, Matthew, John, Acts and the Epistles of Paul. 
His ascetical works on the Book of Acts are the only surviving commentary on the books from the first thousand years of Christianity. Besides his sermons, other lasting works include an early disclosure against those who opposed the monastic life written for parents whose sons were considering a monastic vocation. He also wrote instruction to catechumens on the incomprehensibility of the divine nature and on the priesthood, in which he dedicated two chapters to the art of preaching. John of Antioch was given the posthumous title of Chrysostom or Golden Tongue. Fifteen decades after his death, to the Roman Catholic Church, John Chrysostom is considered a doctor of the Church. In 1908, Pope Pius X designated him the patron saint of Christian orators, preachers and speakers. The Eastern Orthodox, Coptic and Anglican churches also esteem him as a saint. The life and work of St. John Chrysostom, historian Philip Skeff, describes Chrysostom as one of the rare men who combine greatness and goodness, genius and piety, and continue to exercise by his writing. An example a happy influence upon the Christian church. He was a man for his time and for all times. But we must also look at the spirit rather than the form of his piety, which bore the stamp of his age. John Chrysostom spent three brutal years in exile under armed God in the remote town of Kukuz in the mountains of Armenia. Even as his health rapidly failed, he remained steadfast in his devotion to Christ, writing letters of encouragement to friends and receiving visits from loyal followers. While being transferred to a remote village on the eastern shore of the Black Sea, Chrysostom collapsed and was taken to a small chapel near Komana in northeastern Turkey where he died. 31 years after his death, John's remains were transported back to Constantinople and buried in the Church of Holy Apostles. During the Fourth Crusade in 1204, Chrysostom relics were looted by Catholic marauders and taken to Rome, where they were placed in the medieval church of St. Peter's at the Vatican. After 800 years, his remains were transferred to the new Basilica of St. Peter's, where they stayed for another 400 years. In November of 2004, amid continuing efforts toward reconciliation between the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches, Pope John Paul II returned Chrysostom bones to Patriarch Bartholomew I, the spiritual leader of Orthodox Christianity. The ceremony began at St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City on Saturday, November 27, 2004, and continued later in the day as Chrysostom remains were reinstated in a solemn ceremony at the Church of St. George in Istanbul, Turkey. Thanks for watching. If you like to see more content, make sure to like, comment and subscribe.